Hello people, Juggler here, and in this video I'm going to be doing a tier list for teachable killer perks. So it's going to basically be a really good thing for new players if you've just bought the game. This might be something which will help you decide which killer to buy next. I'm going to go over all the perks for each killer and then put them S through to D. Uh, obviously at the start of the game you do start with, uh, I think it's Trapper, Wraith, Billy, Nurse and Huntress from memory. So those ones, I'm still going to put them in the tier list for how good their perks are, but you start with them anyway. And then after that, I'll go all the way through every single one. I'll, I'll talk over each perk, not in a great detail, because that will take an Otstava length style video. Okay, so first up, we've got the Trapper, who comes base kit anyway. Who's got Agitation, Brutal Strength, and Unnerving Presence. These are all fairly solid perks not like amazing or anything like that agitation works really well with pain res hooks um it makes you move fast when you're carrying things so you can use that for memes brutal strength is just breaking pallets walls and generators quicker and then unnerving presence is good for like difficult skill check builds so that being said that's gonna go into b because i think two of those perks are actually quite useful with other builds but overall they're not amazing they're not game changing or anything like that okay next up we've got wraith who has Bloodhound, Predator, and Shadowborn. Bloodhound makes so your pools of uh, blood are redder for survivors. Predator makes it so the scratch marks are easy to find, and Shadowborn makes it so that if you are blinded by any means, because it's recently been reworked, then you gain 10% haste. These are all absolutely garbage. They're, they're, they're not even meme anymore. Like The Shadowborn one could be fun in certain situations, but overall, they are probably the three worst perks for one killer. It, it, definitely, they, they are terrible. I might change this list as I go through because it's going to be difficult to figure out who's going to go where, but we'll keep going. Next up, we've got Hillbilly, who's got Enduring, Lightborn, and Tinkerer. Enduring makes it so that the stun duration is reduced by 50%, which is pretty bloody strong, you know? You can use that for quite a few fun builds. It's not going to be like a, a winnable perk for games, but it's also not terrible. Lightborn makes it so that you can't be blinded anymore and you show the auras of survivors when you do get blinded or when they try and blind you. And then Tinkerer is really nice because when generators hit 70%, you become undetectable. So it gives you map knowledge and it also gives you the ability to sneak up on people. Obviously, survivors will quickly realize you've got it and start playing around it. But that being said, I think that is going to go into B just above Trapper. I, I think Tinkerer and Enjoying are both pretty solid perks. They're not amazing. They're not like gen regression. I'm starting to notice a bit of a pattern with these base kit killers where none of them seem to have much general aggression, which I think is pretty bad. Okay, next up we've got the Nurse. She's got fairly okay perks. Nurse is calling his information, so when they are healing the survivors, then you'll see that aura is within 28 meters. Strider used to be pretty good on spirit, but no one seems to run it anymore. It just increases grunts of pain and breathing by 50%, 25% respectively. And then the first gen regression perk, which is Fanatophobia, which um, keeping survivors injured, it makes it so it's slow. You, you really want all four injured, so it's good to partner with like Sloppy Butcher or something. But that being said, I think Nurse again is going to go B tier. Um, yeah, it would be better if maybe Strider was something different. I'm going to put her just above the Trapper. Okay, so next up we've got Mike Myers, who, as I'd probably say, Two okay perks. Play with your food is really nice for getting a little bit of speed and getting early hits. Really good for the Oni as well. I don't really use the perks. I don't like it. You basically have to let your obsession go to gain 5% haste and it stacks up to 15% so you can get three stacks of it. Then once you hit survivor, the stack goes away. It's it's okay. Uh, and then save the best for last is another one which was really good but it got recently reworked and it... I don't really. The, all three of these perks are not amazing in my opinion, but they're going to go and see. They're not absolutely terrible. Um, Dying Light's okay. It's a bit of a niche perk. It's good for obsession based things. I'm going to keep all the perks up on the screen so you can read through them yourselves as well. And I'll try and make this as quick as possible so it's not too much of me just ch talking away. Okay, so next up we've got the Hag, who has Hex perks. And this was like the introduction to Hex perks. So you've got Hex Devour Hope, which I love. I think it's a really well balanced perk, and I don't. It's not super, super strong because it, it can be cleansed at the end of the day. It can go straight away or it can completely change a game. And that kind of perk I love. It's just like complete 50-50 trade. Hex Ruin, solid gen slowdown. And Hex Third Seal, every time you hit a survivor, they become blind. Once the totem is cleansed, the blindness goes away. So that can be fun. You've got a bit of fun. You've got a bit of a 50-50 one and you've got gen slowdown. I think you've got three solid perks. That's going to be the first A tier one. I, I just think when a killer comes out, it should have... 
in an ideal world, a Gen Slowdown, a fun one, and then something which can have like a cool effect. Similar to how Chucky brought the one out where you can blind the survivors. That kind of stuff's cool. Um, yeah. Okay, so next up we've got Doctor, who's got three fairly cool perks. Monster Abuse, Overcharge, and Overwhelming Presence. I think Overcharge is probably the best of the three here. Monster Abuse can be used for like fun sneak up builds. And Overwhelming Presence, again, is a kind of a, a absolute nothing perk. It basically shouldn't exist or it needs a complete rework. It's just, yeah, terrible. So that being said, I'm going to put Doctor in low C, I think. Because monitoring abuse and overcharge can be kind of useful, and it's, you know, it's, it's all right. Doctor's okay. I might move him to D, I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so next we've got Huntress, who has Beast of Prey, Hex Huntress Lullaby, and Territorial Imperative. One of them makes it so you can see the aura survives when they get in the basement. Uh, Beast of Prey is rewarding you for being bad in chase. And Hex Huntress Lullaby is niche. Uh, if it was Hex Huntress Lullaby and two strong perks, she'd probably be an A tier, but... I'm going to have to put her in D tier above um, right, uh, uh, Perks are terrible. I think Huntress and Wraith have got the two worst set of perks in the game, actually, when I think about it. Yeah. Next, we've got Leatherface, who has Barbecue and Chili, which is all reading. Once you hook a survivor, you can see the furthest away survivors. I think it's at 40 meters away from the hook. That's pretty cool. It, it incense survives going for chases in the distance. Franken's Demise is fun for just meme builds. You knock the item out of survivors' hands when you hit them. And then Knockout, again, is another one for silly builds if you want to make it so that it's difficult to pick up people and you want to go for a full slug build. So Leatherface has a nice mix, but there is missing some gen slowdown, so that's going to put him down a few points. He's going to go low B. I, I think Barbecue and Chili brings that right up. If it didn't have Barbecue and Chili, it would be terrible. Knockout, not great for Franklin's is just goofy. But yeah, I think, I think maybe high C, actually. Yeah, high C. So we've got Freddy, who has Blood Warden, which I think is a absolutely stupendous perk. It's a really, really nice perk. It just it gives endgame a bit of spice. If you hook a survivor once the exit gates are open, it blocks the exit gates for 60 seconds, which can turn a game around. It can turn a 1k or a 0k into a 4k, which I like, because again, it's similar to the Bower Hope. It's got that high risk, high reward sort of thing, and then fire up is fun for like vaulting builds and breaking gen builds just it's just a fun perk it's not anything too special and again remember me makes it the exit game this can be an extra 24 seconds which it incentivizes not tunneling people because you're going for obsessions instead of just going for um the same person over and over again i think these three perks are nice and rounded so that's going to go in low b they're not like i'm not saying go buy freddy because his perks are amazing i'm just saying they're fun and, and overall they're alright. I'm gonna probably put him just above Trapper. The teachables. Okay, the pig. Uh, the pig's a difficult one because she's got one perk which she thinks is really fun. Make your choice. So it incentivizes not tunneling. You um, get away from the hook. Un the survivor gets unhooked and whoever did the unhooking becomes exposed for 60 seconds. So it gives you a target. And a 60 seconds is a long time. You should get that down really. It's a really nice perk. It's, it's just a really nice balanced perk and it's fun. Scourge Hook, Hangman's Trick is terrible. Surveillance is pretty bloody average as well. So with that being said, she's actually going to go in D as well. Make Your Choice brings her to the top of D, and that's the only reason why, in my opinion. Um, so it's not someone I'd nip out and buy just purely on perks alone. Better perks out there, and Make Your Choice isn't that fun. Not like, not worth buying just for one perk. Okay, so we've got the Clown next, who has Bamboozle. You vault a bit faster, and you block the vault for 16 seconds. That's strong, and strong for bloody every killer apart from Nurse, maybe. Uh, Pop Goes a Weasel is an S-tier perk. Uh, just for Gen Slowdown, it's 30% of its current progress. After fucking Survivor, it's got a nice balance to it. And then Coldrophobia, which is, is fun for memes. It's a meme build. You can do, like, a Wesker anti-healing build, so that's, that's pretty cool. So, I think... Clown is going to go high A. I was debating S, just purely on Pop and Bamboozle together. It's a, it's a nice combo. But yeah, I think I think high A is good. Spirit, who has a mixed three fun perks. I didn't actually notice that. I've never really noticed what perks she had. I, I know what perks she has, but it's just... I didn't, I didn't realize they were all fun. You've got Hex Haunted Grounds, so that puts in like some trick totems in the map. They get cleansed, and all survivors are exposed for 60 seconds. Which is, I think that's a really cool perk. It's really balanced and it's just daft. And I just like it. Um, you've got Rancor, which again reveals the auras of survivors. 
um, for three seconds every time a generator is completed, and then also reveals your aura to the obsession. So if they're communicating, then they'll know that you've got it. And in the end game, whoever your obsession is is killable and insta downable. So you can run a fun meme build with that. I like Rancor, I think it's a cool perk. And then Spirit Fury, every time you break two pallets, the next pallet hit on your head when it was meant to stun you, just breaks. It still stuns you, but it, it breaks instantly, which is, I, I think, three very fun perks. So if you are debating just playing DVD for fun factor, then Spirit is definitely one to go out and buy. So that being said, she's going to go in A. Um, actual how good the perks are, she probably goes into B or maybe C. But I'm just saying because it's three nice, fun perks. You, you'll, you'll have three very different builds out of it, which is, which is cool. I like that. Legion's up next, um, who has okay perks, actually. I didn't really realise what perks he had. Do you know when you just forget whose teachables are whose? Uh, Discordance. Two survivors working on gener generator. You see that aura. Oh, you see the aura of the generator. Sorry, if it goes yellow. That, that's really, really, really good information. It's a very strong perk, and it's up to 128 metres. So that's like the entire map. It's... Uh, yeah, it's really strong perk. Um, it's not like S-tier perk, but it's, it's strong and fun to have. Uh, Iron Maiden makes it so that you open lockers quicker, so it's good for like Huntress or Trickster or anyone who reloads on lockers. And if a survivor jumps out of a locker, they scream and become exposed for 30 seconds. So if you're playing Bubba, you can do some stuff with that. Think about it. And then Mad Grip. It basically means every time you hit survivor while someone's on your back and you're carrying them, it pauses the wiggle timer for four seconds. I was going to say six seconds. So you've got information perk a fun perk with mad grit and then iron maiden is niche for certain killers depends on which killer you play and i'd probably say it's a tier if you like huntress or something but overall i'm gonna go b i think i think b is fair plague is up next and if you're an only main because a lot of only mains do watch my channel this is probably a, a killer you want to buy because you've got corrupt intervention which is amazing for early game you can start a trial with 120 seconds of blockage on three generators yeah that's that's really really strong for setting up a game dark devotion is a fun perk you hit your obsession they gain your terror radius and you're undetectable obviously infectious fright again downing a survivor makes it so you reveal a survivor's auras within is it within the terror radius is within this area, so I'm going to say 16 meters and six seconds of all reading when a, when a survivor dies near you. Um, the other survivors around you, sorry. So I'd, I'm going to say Plague is S tier. Just, there's no gen slowdown there, but there's game slowdown um, and fun. I think that's a really nice combo. So that's the first S tier killer, especially if you're an only main. Um, I think, yeah, Plague's solid. And you can buy Plague without having to spend real money. So play the game and save up and buy it. So that's really, really nice. Okay, uh, Ghostface is up next, who's got Furtive Chase, Amor Lays, and Prilling Tremors. So every time you hook the Obsession, you... Oh, it got reworked, didn't it? Yeah, I was going to say you reduce your Terror Radius a bit, but it's not that. It's uh, you gain an undetectable status effect of 5% haste for 18 seconds, which is pretty good. That's fun. It's a, it, I use it a lot on Oni, just for the fun factor of the speed. Um, I'm all is is all reading, so that's nice. Frilling Tremors blocks all gens not being worked on for 16 seconds once you pick up a Survivor. I'd say overall, a pretty, pretty nice perk. It's a pretty solid. So it's gonna go top of B, I think, with those. Uh, yeah, just above Billy, because all three, all three of them are, um, are solid. Yeah, I think I think Ghostface actually has okay perks. I'm all is is not great, but yeah, overall okay. Demogorgon has rule limits, mind breaker, and surge. I can't remember the other names of the perks because they got renamed and renamed again back to what they were. I think that's what they were meant to be. Uh, cruel limits. Every time a gen is completed, it blocks all vault locations for 30 seconds. That's pretty fun. Uh, Mind Breaker is really nice. Uh, survivors working on generators are exhausted and blind. Then they let go of it and they have to wait like five seconds or something for it to wear off. That's so fucking nice. It's Surge mixes that if you put a survivor in the dying state, I think within 32 meters of that location, it uh, breaks generators by 8%. So on indoor maps, that's really strong with basic attack killers, obviously. But yeah, I think overall, all three perks are okay. Cruel Limits is probably the weaker one of the three, but the other two are so strong it carries Demogorgon to high B. Yeah, high B. Okay, so next up, we've got the Oni who... The three perks are Blood Echo, Nemesis, and Xanshin Tactics. Xanshin Tactics is 
all right for very specific killers and very specific builds. Nemesis makes it so that any time your obsession switches, that survivor switch from the Oblivious Days effect. That's pretty cool. But, yeah, and also it's just good for making, like, uh, obsession-based builds. Because you can swap the obsession every time you're stunned. It pops to that person who stunned you. Blood Echo is probably the strongest of the three, I think. If you're running, like, a anti-heal build because every if all survivors are injured and you hook a survivor they all suffer from exhaust and blind i think it is oh it's hemorrhage and exhaust for 60 seconds or 40, 45 seconds i mean yeah that's okay on very specific killers so with that being said i think oni's i think a high bottom yeah they're not they're not great perks Okay, Deathsling has got Deadman Switch, which is really, really strong. If you hook a survivor, any survivor lets go is generators in that situation. Um, block the generator for 30 seconds. It's pretty damn nice. And it shows you, it gives you knowledge of which generators are blocked. So that's decent. It's a very solid perk. It's probably in the top like 10 perks. Uh, Gearhead is niche, but fun for all reading. You injure a survivor. Survivors working on generators hitting a skill check will reveal that aura to you. That's um, that's pretty good knowledge. It's not a strong perk, but it's it's fun if you're using all reading. It's, it's good on Oni as well if you're just whipping around the map and you see like someone hit a skill check, you're gonna sneak up on them and down them straight away. Uh, Re Hex Retribution, that's just only good with going for a full totem build. Again, they're they're pretty good. So I think Dead Man's Switch makes it a go over there with that. No, because yeah, that that's fair. IB. Okay, Pyramid Head has Death Bound, Force Penance, and Trail of Torment. I'd say out of the three of these, Trail of Torment is probably the only really, really viable one. It's not that viable. That's when you kick a generator, you lose your terror radius until the generator stops regressing or is worked on again. So that can just be counted so quick if the survivor's nearby. Uh, Death Bound again, if survivor heals from far away from you, I think they scream. Um... And reveal their location and they're also oblivious that's that's okay force penance i don't i don't even know what that does i've never seen anyone use it those stand in your way of duty suffer harsh judgment so obviously took a protection hit suffer from the broken effect for 80 seconds it's okay it's niche but overall i think pyramid has to go in the, the bottom section Oof. because of trail of torment go in there it's a shame they should have reworked some of those perks Blight is up next, one of the strongest killers in the game. What perks does he have? Dragon's Grip. Fun for very specific niche builds, but overall terrible. It's a really, really bad perk. Uh, Hex Blood Favor, strong uh, in, a, in a Hex build. Hex Undying, again, strong with like Ruin or Devour Hope. But overall, I would say they're not the best of perks, but they're not the worst either. So it's like, if you put someone like that... Surely because of Undying and Blood Favor, I'm going to go into B. Twins is up next with Coup de Graph, which is a fun perk. Every time a gen is completed, you gain like two stacks, which makes it you can lunge at 80% further. Yeah, that's, that's strong. That's, that's, it's not strong strong, but it's fun strong. It's like, it's good. Uh, Hoarder makes it so that when a survivor uh, loots a chest, you see that aura thing and you get notification. Oh, it picks up any item as well. I didn't realize it was that as well. Um... It also spawns two additional chests, so it gives survivors a bit of incentive to go for them. Uh, not great. It's, it's good for certain killers, good for certain builds, but overall, pretty average. Okay, Oppression is going to be gen slowdown, but it needs a reduced cooldown, in my opinion. It should be like 60 seconds or something. It gives you difficult skill checks. If you kick one generator, any other generator is being worked on it, or any generator is what progress, stop from a difficult skill check. If there's no one on it, it starts progressing anyway. So it's it's good if you're in a free mana situation or a free gen situation, but survivors can do those skill checks. They're not that difficult. So Coup de Gras is probably the only good perk there. So Twins is going to go along with my, uh, along with Bubba. With like the barbecue and chili being the only good perk. Okay, so we have Trickster next, who has No Way Out, which is one of, I'd say one of the strongest perks in the game. It adds an extra minute to the game if you play the game correctly. Um, hooking each survivor once gains 12 seconds and then 60 in total. So as soon as the um, exit gates are powered up, a survivor touches the uh, the mechanism to open it. It blocks it for 60 seconds and that is that can be crucial. I can like literally win a game. That's a really strong perk and it's fun and balanced. Starstruck, again, is a perk I really like. I think it's a really fun, balanced perk. So if you pick up a survivor, 
Survivors within your terror radius suffer from the exposed state's effect. Once you have a survivor, it lingers, visit for up to 30 seconds or something like that. So that's fun. Uh, you've, got, you've got a strong perk of fun perk, and then Hex Crowd Control's garbage. That lets it down a bit. But I think because of Starstruck and No Way Out, I'm going to bring it up, to, it up into A. Okay, so Nemesis is next. <laughs> this would be easily S tier if it was pre-eruption nerf. Um, eruption gives you information and gen slow down. So kicking a gen makes it so it gets like a, a bomb inside it, so to speak. And then you can do up to... Is it up to all gens? I think it's all gens. Yeah, so... Once you down a survivor after kicking all these different generators, they all explode for 10%. And if a survivor is working on the generator, you see that aura for 12 seconds. Wow, that's a long time. I don't really notice how long it is. Um, that, that used to be a really strong perk. It's not that strong anymore, but it's still it's viable and it's it's good in certain things. It's also got Lethal Pursuer, which, as a lot of people know, I love that perk. It makes so you see the survivor's aura at the start of the trial, unless he's in distortion, and it adds an extra two seconds of aura reading to any aura reading build or perk. So, Nemesis is good. They're, they're good perks. And then Hysteria is not really worth mentioning. Um, it makes survivors oblivious who are injured once you injure another survivor. It, it's niche. It's... It's very, very niche. The survivor has to be injured for it to work. And then you have to injure a healthy one to make them oblivious. It, it, it's like, it, there's too much going on with that perk to make it worthwhile, in my opinion. You'd have to go for a full anti-healing build, and then Hysteria is not one of the better anti-healing perks, so I don't recommend. Pinhead is next, who has Deadlock. Very strong perk. Every time a generator is completed, the most progress gen is blocked for 30 seconds. That buys you in the game. What is it like? Two minutes of extra time, technically, in a way. Two and a half minutes if you if you're lucky with it, but it's strong. It's it's a good it's a good solid perk. Um Hex Plaything is also a nice perk. It can add a bit of slowdown without even meaning to be a slowdown perk, because every time you hook a survivor, uh, up to four or every survivor has their own separate one. It makes a dull totem become hexed, and that survivor is oblivious until that totem is cleansed. So that adds slowdown because People don't want to be oblivious the entire game, so it's, it's really, really nice. Then Hex, uh, sorry, Scourge Hook, Gift of Pain. Looking a survivor makes it so that... I'm going to have to read this one. I remember it, but I can't remember exactly. Um, makes Scourge Hooks come in the trial. So you hook a survivor on this Scourge Hook, and they become hemorrhaged and mangled. Um, upon healing the survivor, they suffer from 16% gen uh, slowdown speed. So it's... I have used it a few times. It's one of those ones. It it, it pro it's trying to promote anti-tunneling, but it's it's okay. It's an okay perk. The other two are strong enough to make it into A tier, though. I'm gonna put Pinhead in low A tier. Yeah, because because Plaything and Deadlock are viable, I'd say, and, and fun. I like I like totem builds. So yeah. Okay, the artist is going straight into number one spot. There's no surprise there whatsoever. Grim Embrace, if you don't know what that does, that is so bloody strong at the minute. You hook a survivor, you get away from the hook with 12 meters away from the hook, it blocks all hooks for 12 seconds, so it can it can really come in clutch like Pop Goes a Weasel. Uh, and then you hook all four survivors once, and then it blocks them all for 40 seconds, the generators, once you get away from the hook. So that, to me, is a perfectly balanced perk. It's strong. It, it's nice, and it pro it promotes healthy gameplay, and it also is strong. Hex Pentimento, really fun. You can do an entire build around hexes, and that can be it can be strong and fun at the same time. It puts slow down without meaning to put slow down. Like just cleansing the tomes is slow down enough. And then Scourge Hook Pain Resonance is probably the strongest perk in the game right now. So she's easily S tier. If you've not got, uh, if you're after buying a killer, and you want to like win games, Artist is the one for you because you've got two perks you can put in any build for any killer you want straight off the bat. Like Grim Embrace and uh, Pain Res are just so good. Medico or Ringu, how do you want to say a name? Has Call of Brine, Merciless Storm, and Scourge Hook Floods of Rage. So Scourge Hook Floods of Rage is if once um, you start the trial, there's four Scourge Hooks. You hook a survivor on that Scourge Hook once they are unhooked. All survivors, apart from the one who was hooked, uh, show their aura for 10 seconds, I think it is. That's fun, and it's strong. It's, it's, it's not a bad perk at all. Uh, Merciless Storm adds a, can add a bit of slowdown, or cannot. Um, survivors at 90% of the gen suffer from loads of difficult skill checks. If they miss it, it blocks the gen for, is it 18 seconds? 20 seconds. So it's not bad. But good survivors at the higher end of MMR will um, not miss the skill checks. 
And then you've got Call of Brian, which makes uh, damaging generators make some regress slightly faster. And also you get a loud noise notification each time a survivor hits a good scale check on that effect generator. So you get gen knowledge and you get a bit of slowdown. So I'd say Ringu's all right. She can go into A tier, low A tier. Yeah, I'd highly recommend buying her. She's got some fun perks there. Dredge is next, who has Darkness Revealed, Disillusion, and Septic Touch. Disillusion, I don't know why it gives the survivors knowledge that you've got this perk. I think it's stupid. Um, damaging a survivor, and then the vault a pallet breaks the pallet whilst within your terrace, but it's only a 20 seconds. It's... And they know, they know they've got it, so they're not going to vault anything because it'll break the pallet. It's like... It's such, it's so hard to get value out of that stupid perk. Yeah, it needs reworking, just tweaking or something. It's terrible. Uh, Septic Touch, just read it. it. It's not, it's not a good perk. Darkness Revealed, do you loot a locker? And you see the survivor's aura within 60 meters, is it? Within 8 meters. Oh my god, that needs to be high. It should be 12 meters. Five seconds. Good on certain, it's very good on certain uh, maps, and it's also very bad on other maps, and it's also good for, say, Huntress, because she's going to be looting lockers anyway, so. Oh god, they're not good. Yeah, somewhere down there. Okay, so Wesker has Awaken Awareness. So carrying a survivor makes so you can see the aura of survivors uh, within 24 meters. 20 meters. So it's good for very specific builds, like backpack builds. Um, it's good for a little bit of information, I guess. And then it's, overall, it's not a great perk. Superior Anatomy, which uh, if a survivor fast vaults, Within 8 meters of view, I think it is. Increase your vault speed by 40% next time you vault a window. I and mean, then it goes on cooldown for 30 seconds. I'd... Why that... that has a cooldown of 30 seconds, I, I will never know. It should be like 20 or something. It's just not that strong. Uh, I'm surprised this is a licensed killer with such bad perks. Okay, so you got Terminus Last, which is a fun, viable perk in very specific builds. But it's not worth buying the killer just for just for that perk. It's not that good. It basically counts adrenaline. Once exit gates pop, anyone is injured or anything like that, or is injured after the last gen pops, uh, something's run broken for 30 seconds. Once they're actually open. So yeah, it's the it's that's the end game has changed dramatically. It's a fun and good perk in you know, overall, but the other two are terrible, so that being said, I'm mean, gonna have to go in D, but. Because of Terminus, you're going to go in slightly higher D. Okay, so next we've got the Knight who has nowhere to hide, which I love. I love that perk so much. It's amazing. You kick a generator and it travels with you. And you can see the auras of survivors within 24 meters. That is really nice. And it goes well with Lethal Pursuer. It's a, it's a solid, solid perk. Um, it's good for all killers as well. Hubris, every time you're stunned, um, the survivor suffers from the exposed for 20 seconds. It's a fun perk. It, you can build around it as well with Spirit Fury and Jaw Ring and Hubris. It's, it's just fun. Why not? Uh, then Hex Face the Darkness. Uh, injuring a survivor makes a dull totem becomes hexed. And any survivor outside of your terror radius screams, revealing their aura uh, until the tome's either cleansed or the survivor's put into the dying state and then that becomes dull and rinse and repeat. But if it's cleansed, it's gone. So again, two fun perks, one fairly strong perk. Because Nowhere to Hide is a good perk, definitely. That being said, I'm going to go with B. Skull Merchant has Game of Thought, Leverage, and Pwack. Leverage, you just you don't get the value from it. Read it. It just doesn't give you value. It's just it's too niche. There's too many weird numbers there. It needs tweaking or something. You could probably double the number and it'd be fine. Um, Pwack. When you hook a survivor, um, I, th I think this is how it should be. When you hook a survivor, gain two stacks. Because... Fucking one survivor and you got a kicker, pallet, or break of a wall, it makes any survivors within 30 meters scream, which, by the way, interrupts an action. So if they're trying to blind you with a flashlight and you kick that uh, pallet, they'll do that with a flashlight and then you can down them. It, they won't get the blind off and it really, really... It, I've, I've downed a lot of people with that. It's quite fun. That, I'll, that pick alone's fun. Uh, Game of Four, I've never used it. I'll have to read it because I've literally never used it. Whenever you hit the survivor with the highest chase time, with a basic attack, they become the obsession. Grants 5% haste um, while it's chasing the set obsession. If you damage a generator, break a wall or pallet, it's, it's, it's so niche. It, you could make it 10% haste and it'd be, it'd be fine. <laughs> I don't know why it's not. So with that being said, just it, the fun perks, but not great perks. So she's going to go in low C. Singularity has two perks I wish they would tweak. 
quite a lot. So force hesitation makes it so that when you down a survivor, anyone within 60 meters suffers from 20% hindered for 10 seconds. Keep it at 10 seconds because it's a low amount. I would make it so that it's 20 meters. 16 is too small. It's way too small. Um, so that, that needs reworking in my opinion. It needs tweaking or something. Uh, genetic limits. I don't think I've ever used it. Whenever survivor finishes a healing action, they suffer from the exhaust state's effect for 32 seconds. That's terrible. It's such a bad perk. Machine learning is so close to being perfect. All it needs is every time you kick a generator, so at the moment it gives you 30 seconds after kicking two generators and that generator is completed, or the last one where you kick is completed, you gain 30 seconds of 10% haste and undetectable, which is that strong. So if you made it so it was 20%, sorry, if you made it so it was 20 seconds for the 10% haste and undetectable, I made it so that every time you kick a generator, once that gen is completed, you gain that buff. That's it. That would be a fine perk. It wouldn't be overpowered. It would be nice. It would be viable and fun. But at the moment, as it stands, it's, it's, it's got too many variables to make it worthwhile. I do use it in haste builds, boys. Yeah, for that, you're going in the... Definitely going in the bottom. Not that far down, though. Jesus. About there. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so next we've got Alien, who has recently had Ultimate Weapon reworked. Alien... If it wasn't reworked, would be going in high A. But because of the rework, it's slightly changed. So you've got Alien Insect first, which makes so the aura of the furthest away survivor is revealed to you for five seconds. That survivor's from the Oblivious State's effect for 20 seconds. Oh, it's also Injured Survivor. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, so that's fun and niche. I like that perk. It's balanced, fun and niche. Rapid Brutality makes it so that you can no longer get Bloodlust, which is when you speed up for chasing a survivor for a certain amount of time. Instead, it rewards survivors for getting an early hit on someone with a basic attack by giving them 5% haste regardless. But, uh, 10 seconds. I would make that number 12 seconds. What, why is it only 10? Don't know. It's still, it's still a nice perk, it's fun, and if you really, if you are like a strong M1 killer and you know like your game sense is off the charts, be a good perk <coughs> right but getting down to the nitty-gritty of ultimate weapon and um, let me have a look at this i've actually read the rework fully so when they spot you they know the end is near whenever you open a locker ultimate weapon activates for 15 seconds so that's been reduced survivors entering your terror radius have their aura revealed for three seconds survivors entering your terror radius also from blindness for 30 seconds when it's got a cooldown of 60. it's still going to be viable it's it's not a weak perk but it's nowhere near as strong as it was uh they make distortion gamers a bit more annoying as well, but I, I will use it on Oni because I'll loot a locker and just sprint around the map and I'll, I'll be able to. It might be better for Oni. If they've not got distortion on that, will be better for Oni, I think. You'll be able to see them. Yeah, it's good. Uh, so, yeah. Alien perks. Hmm. I be. Chucky has batteries included, which I'm so glad they changed last second before letting it go. I think it went live for like a week and they made it so it actually um, is, is a little bit better. They want to cancel it once the gens popped. We kept it. So once all gens are done, or once, well, one, one gen's done and you're in 12 meters within 12 meters? Yeah, within 12 meters of complete generator, you gain 5% haste and it lingers for 5 seconds. It's nice because it turns it into an endgame perk, but it also works throughout the match. It's, it's nice. I, I like that perk. It's not like OP. It could probably... No, I, th I think it's fine as it is. I was going to say they could maybe increase increase the meterage to like 13 meters or something. I think it's fine. It's, it's a fine perk. Uh, friends till the end. What a niche, but it's, it's only good for killers who can literally get to the other side of the map as quick as possible because... Well, unless the obsession's near you, but it's rare that it is for some reason. And then Hex 2 can play. <clears throat> I don't think that needs to be two times. I think one time would be fine. Once you've been stunned once, then it still uh, it makes a dull tone appear. Like, yeah, it's okay. It's fun. So you've got one okay perk. You've got two kind of fun, goofy perks, but they're not... Yeah, they're not great. Again, a licensed killer. They could have made a killing if they made a couple of the perks, like, make one of them a slightly good gen regression, something. I don't know, but they just didn't. Weird. Last but not least, we have the Unknown, who has Unbound, Undone, and Unforeseen. Read Undone. It is terrible. It is absolutely terrible, and it could be good. It... I don't know how I'd make it better. Probably double the amount you gain per um, missed skill check, because at the moment it's just... It's rubbish. 
Um, unbound. I haven't actually read this one because I've never used it. When a survivor becomes injured by any means, unbound activates for 30 seconds. Grants 5% haste after vaulting a window. Probably good for a vault build. It should be 10% haste for 12 seconds. It, it's not. It's, it should be 10% haste, actually, and that'd be fine. It's still not going to be the best perk in the game or anything like that. It's too weak. Unforeseen, though, that's a fun perk. Kick a generator and your terrain is on the generator for 30 seconds. And you're obviously undetectable. That's fun. Why not? That's one good perk. So with that being said, he's going to go into C. Just because of Unforeseen. Yeah, I think I think overall I'm happy with where I've put people. Uh, let me have a look. Yeah. So you've got... I highly recommend getting Artist in Plague. If, if, if you've just bought the game and you want to have a nice build, you can buy Artist in Plague um, and use Corrupt Intervention, Grim Embrace, uh, Infectious Fright, and Pain Residence. Two very solid, those two are the ones I'd recommend buying first. If you've just bought, say, if you want to be a Freddy main or whatever, I'd buy Artist in Plague first. And they're not licensed, so they're going to be cheaper. You can also means you can get them for um, in-game currency instead of having to pay your own money. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And apparently 47.1% of people aren't subscribed, so subscribe or something. I don't know, that's what YouTubers say, isn't it? Anyway, take care.